with you, to share just one thing with you. I'd want you to know that I have spent my whole life trying to work out how to be happy. I've been obsessed with happiness and uh, pleasure, a hedonism and freedom uh, for as long as I can remember. I hated school, I hated uh, the limitation, I hated the structure, I hated people having authority over me. I've always been fascinated with freedom. As a young adult, tried to create a way of living in this world without being bound by its restrictions and uh, found that so painful and challenging and again was just obsessed with the pursuit of pleasure. And then at the age of 27, just two days after the millennium, had a massive life-changing epiphany which from that moment forward gave me a taste of what I consider to be our true natural happiness that's available to all of us at any given moment. And I was flooded from within, as in an eruption from within, with just extraordinary amounts of unconditional love and a sense of perfection and a sense of the interconnected wondrousness of this incredible life. I know it can be hard. I know it can be brutal. But the truth is, the challenges that we are experiencing are just opportunities, invitations home. When we are in our purest place, we are free and loving, unconditionally loving of ourselves and others. And yet, we, we, so many of us know that, but what are we waiting for? What are we, what are we waiting for to have that permission? To just forgive all those people and to love everybody with where they're at and, and, and how they're feeling. Why, why is it like we need to be broken down? Life will, will, will be almost unwavering in its brutality to wake us up to our true value. Whilst we're operating with limited ideas about what we're worth or what we deserve or we're frustrated or held back by resentments or we just give up because people have disappointed us or we just shrug our shoulders expecting things to be lame or difficult or painful. And then we have our compensation, so we decide to be good, or we decide to be kind, or we decide to be independent, and to never rely on anyone, and never let anyone in. Our life ends up being defined by, firstly, our complaints, and our compensations. The things that we would complain about, and then the systems we have created to cope with our worldview. And those are nothing to do with who you are. You are pure love. You are more loved than you realise. You are more beautiful than you realise. You have more potential than you realise. We all do. Near what happens to us along the way just kicks the crap out of us. So we doubt. Life dares us to close our hearts. Life dares us to become small-minded. Life dares us to doubt our validity. To be scared to speak up. To be scared to stand out. And our job, our work, is to recognise that our life is a reflection of how free we are. And that the pain we're experiencing, if we go into it, if we go into it deeply enough, there is a young version of us just twiddling its, you know, like looking at the floor, unable to hug itself, unable to recognise its innate and absolute beautiful perfection. So our struggles are an opportunity for deeper levels of self-love. Deeper levels of recognizing, you know, we love ourselves conditionally. So many of us love ourselves conditionally. We love ourselves because we're a kind person. We love ourselves because we're good at what we do in our job. It's like, you know what? In my life, the universe took it all away. It brought me to my knees. It took away everything that I might use to define my value. And what I discovered was I, despite having been preaching about unconditional love for years, I had a completely conditional relationship with myself. I like myself because I helped people. I like myself because I was good as a, a, you know, I helped. I helped or I was kind or I was funny or I had money in my pocket. And what happened when all that went away? No, I didn't like myself. And I connected to a whole bunch of anguish that was otherwise unrecognized in me, which we do with politeness. Everyone's so polite. Politeness enables us to operate in ways that we're absolutely terrified and, and disconnected from our misery. But we just don't really notice and other people don't notice and we don't make sure we make sure our stuff and our vulnerabilities don't really cause trouble for others and vice versa. We're all very fucking polite about it. But the truth is we're, we're, we're free. And the truth is we're ultimately valuable and not because of those things. 
And our work is to then look at the frustrations and look at, look at, okay, well, what do I need to do? How can I track that? What is turning up in my life? I guarantee you, if you've got frustrations turning up in your adult life, it's because there are frustrations that are unresolved in your past. So you can sit around complaining about them, or you can actually recognize this is an invitation to greater levels of freedom and get, roll your sleeves up and dive in. Get involved. There is a young child inside you who is scared, who needs you to pick it up and say, I've got you. I don't need that. I needed that from other people then. Right now I can give it to you. The best relationship you will have in your life is with yourself. Developing a loving relationship where you are able to connect with yourself and put your arm around yourself and, and, and parent yourself through your greatest challenges with love and peace in your heart and not allowing your heart to be closed to others. And so if I could say one thing to you, or I had one moment to speak to you, I'd say you are already pure happiness and pure love. And that all of your practices, whatever your philosophies, whatever your spiritual beliefs, it's all about remembering that. It's all about looking at your victimology and turning it to your victory. It's about going from small to large. It's about going from fear to love. And there's, there's a map for that. And it's not always easy, but it is simple. And it is simple. If you're suffering now, it's because there is something unresolved in you, seeking resolution. And if you can have the courage to look at that, then it will roll over at your feet and you will learn about the limitations, the things you've been holding on to. And so my greatest hope for you is that you will have the courage to do that work, to go on that journey, to look at those things, to find inside yourself that, 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 that place, that pristine and pure, unwavering, unaffected place which is not tarnished by the challenges of your past, by the brutal educational system, and by the clumsy parenting and the inconsistencies that disappointed us along the way from our friends and our family. And to find that untouched place, that pure center point, and recognize then it's not a matter of being amazing in spite of having challenges in your past or even now. It's recognizing something about that is your gift. Something about your mess is your message. Something about the journey you have gone on, you have embodied in this journey for a reason. What are you here to learn? For all of us, we're a part of a singular field of consciousness playing in different forms to understand what is truth, what is love. How can love overcome challenge? So we have been challenged, yes. Some of us, extraordinarily so. That is a testament to your soul if it is true. And there is an opportunity here for all of us. If we step outside of our personal needs and think of our universal possibilities, then what's being asked of you to transcend? Because if you work that out, we all get that. Your freedom is my freedom and my freedom is your freedom. We're all in it together. We're one field, one field of conscious awareness. And it's our job, not with a severe and strained and serious responsibility is our job with a joyful curiosity to think ah oh, what what cards have I been dealt with today and how can I bring love to it how can I bring truth to it how can I bring an openness even though I'm losing all sense of the known you know what we know what our identity these compensations that served us so well when we were younger they end up limiting us and imprisoning us in a worldview in a personality that's not who we are I developed a system of therapy, a spiritual form of therapy, which for me uh, is a very powerful way of helping people um, transform their challenges. But I also have to let go of all the rigidity that's come with that and just be open to learning and be open to expanding and recently realizing so many new flavors of what's possible, expanding my ideas, expanding my paradigm, turning up every day and trusting the moment all sorts of things that I thought were certain are being taken away. I've had extraordinary abundance over this last few years in terms of investment, but in terms of also possibilities and where I thought I would be. It's different to what I thought. And again, it's opportunities for me to realize parts of me just want to grab onto something known and certain and positive and just cement that into the ground and let that be my truth. Let that be my story. And it's like, no, and I just... The universe won't let us do that. It wants to continually make us be free, to be fluid, to be open, to not be defined by even the things that we thought were awesome about ourselves. To turn up in each moment and ask ourselves simply, what's the truth and what would love to? What is the truth and what would love to? And right now, the truth is, I want to tell you that you are amazing, that you are perfect. There is nothing wrong with you. Is your life easy? Probably not. Mine certainly isn't. Is it meant to be? No. It's meant to invite you to greater levels of integration, greater levels of love, and it does that with challenge. And so the more that you can trust and surrender and open to the game of that, 
the more free you will be. And in an instant, your perception can change. And when your perception of your situation changes, the blessings turn up. And I don't mean it becomes all good. We see the blessings in what we previously described as bad. In fact, we transcend the whole world of judgment. The whole realm of duality becomes a ridiculous, redundant concept where all things are equal. And there is a place for all things and a meaning to all things, which means there is a meaning to you and a purpose to you. So if you can turn up today and just ask that question, what's the truth and what would love do? Beyond your fear, beyond your personality, at the constraints of your identity, and be free to courageously follow your impulse, follow what might be being called for, to do something different to what you would usually do, and see where it leads you, and see the energy that brings, and see the possibility that brings, and there's the... As you realise it more and more, your purpose is to love yourself enough to create a life that you adore. To be uncompromising in your commitment to yourself. To do work on all those moments of difficulty and pain in your life. To liberate yourself from the idea of inadequacy. To then lear learn the tools of how to release your potential and how to align your life with mechanical, accountable action that is in keeping with your highest and greatest potential. And then ultimately, the third pillar of free mind is to transcend the limited idea of your personality altogether. To recognize you are part of the singular field. There is no death that you are an eternal entity that is playing with form to learn about love. And so it's an extraordinary opportunity, an exquisite excruciation. And um, it's the greatest opportunity for our energy to experience and the more we can bring joy and gratitude to it, the more beautiful it becomes. So wishing you all the most amazing, amazing day. I love you. The universe loves you. You are a pure and perfect being.